for Nat's family Christmas this year, they're all getting gifts that we've made in the workshop, primarily on the sand sea with some acrylic jewelry, as well as these wall art things that she's been making. She's drawn all the artwork herself, then it's over to me being machine monkey to mill them all out and then paint them. Now, these are fairly complex paintings. There's not a lot of painting going on, but the shapes mean that there'd be a lot of work in cleaning them up if we were to just spray all over it and then sand it back. So instead of just spraying and then sanding it all back, which gets expensive in sandpaper and can break the edges or the sandpaper itself, we've been using this a spray mask. This is a vinyl type product that has an adhesive on the back and is designed for well, spraying signs and stuff. The particular product I've been using is Aslan 85G, but there are other companies that make spray masks. Avery comes to mind, Inventable sell those. Uh, and we'll look at other options in this video. So we could just put the mask on, carve it out, spray it, but we've got a pro few problems with that. First, the spray mask doesn't bond that great to raw wood, because although this is fairly smooth, it's not uh, as smooth as other materials. So the adhesive doesn't have a high enough tack to really grab onto it. So it tends to pull up when we're milling on the sand sea. Secondly, the spray paint can wick in the grain uh, and bleed through underneath the mask. We don't want either of those things. So first we're gonna do some surface preparation. Uh, I'm gonna sand this up to 240 grit. Uh, 180 is okay, but no rougher than that. Then we're gonna seal it and then put the mask on. I'm using a two pound cut of blonde de-waxed shellac, but you can just as easily use any polyurethane. BLO or tongue oil isn't suitable. We want to seal the surface. Shellac is great because it works on top of or underneath any film finish and dries super quickly. In this case, it was about 15 minutes before I gave it a light sand and then applied a second coat. So this is nice and smooth and the wood is nice and sealed. So the next thing is to apply the spray mask. Now, as I said, this is Aslan's 85G. Uh, the difference between the 85G and the S79 is that this has a higher initial tack, though after 24 hours, they have the same tack level. So if you're finding that your paint mask is peeling off a bit easy when you first apply it, wait some period of time uh, and it potentially will get a bit stronger. Um, whatever you go with, it's worth looking at the TDS so you know what properties, what temperature range it operates better at, that sort of thing. The paper backer is just peeled off the vinyl, then onto the wood. Having a roller is essential, though it doesn't have to be this kind of expensive roller from Fast Cap. I actually find I get great results from a very inexpensive rubber ink brayer. This step is critical though, as it gets the mask flat and pressed firmly onto the surface. So I've got the art piece loaded into the CNC. Uh, the, this piece will be a little bit wider than the carving, so it needs to be trimmed down on the table saw later. Not a big deal. Uh, but that's why there's so much extra material and why the clamps are where they are. The clamps have a piece of cork underneath it. If you use the Inventables clamps, uh, let's see if I can find one. They're hollow on the underside, I believe these are 3D printed. Uh, and that hollow part can pinch a little bit on the vinyl mask and cause it to lift up a little. So the cork solves that problem. Uh, the bit selection is also important. We're going to be using a spiral down cut bit. An up cut bit obviously clears chips better. A down cut bit gives a better result uh, as in a flat bottom. Those are important things to consider if you are doing CNC work or routing work in general. But in this case with the mask, we don't want the mask to be pulled up by the spiral up cut bit. The down cut bit forces the fibers down and won't uh, pull the mask up as much or at all. Uh, after this bit, I'll be switching to a V bit. So that's essentially a straight cutter. It is a little bit more prone to fraying the mask rather than lifting it. 
So that's still okay. I will be using the dust collection, but if we put this on, you can see that the bristles are not actually touching the surface. You don't want the bristles to touch the surface, otherwise they can sort of catch it and peel it off. Dust collection is okay, but if it's overly powerful, you may need to dial it down or turn it off entirely uh, so it doesn't actually pull the mask off from the suction. Because the dust collection doesn't get all the way in, there tends to be a few extra fuzzies left behind after milling. They can be scraped out pretty easily. After the fuzzies are gone, I put on another coat of shellac to seal the wood and prevent the paint from bleeding through the grain. Then it's just a matter of hitting it with some spray paint. Alternatively, you can easily dab on acrylic paints with a foam brush. The peeling process reveals nice crisp lines and no further work is done. No sticky residue, no sanding needed. So I've trimmed the sides off and I am super pleased with how this has come up. There are a few things I could have done a little bit better uh, in terms of sanding preparation on these sections here. But otherwise, uh, the process was prep the surface, so that's sanding, sealing, putting the vinyl on, carving, spray painting, removing the uh, mask. So it's really quite a Simple process once you get some of the basics done and the results are fantastic. I certainly couldn't paint all the details in this all that quickly if I was doing it with a brush. Now you don't have to use a paint mask. There are lots of ways to get similar results. Some people will use masking tape. Uh, painter's tape specifically, there are different properties of both blue and green tapes depending on the brand. Though there are some downsides to using the tape instead of a mask. While it's cheaper per roll, uh, you're actually going to use a fair bit of a roll actually applying it to a surface like that and it's fiddling. That's not that big a deal. Uh, if there's any overlapping, however, that can throw out your zeroing process. If you use a probe on top of your material like I do, uh, again, you can get around that. That's not the end of the world. Uh, the bigger issue is that with a straight bit, the tearing on the sign that I got or on the vinyl mask I got, uh, it wasn't that bad, but on masking tape, I found that can be problematic. So it might depend on the type of carving and thus painting that you're doing. Uh, can you use it with a regular router bit? Yep, no problems. Uh, the only thing to be aware of is that uh, much like the dust collection bristles pulling up the mask, you may have the same issue with either dust collection or with the router base itself. So rather than plonking the router directly on the workpiece, you might want to then put some spacer pieces, let's say these two pieces of wood on top, and then ride the router on that. So you're just having to plunge down a little bit further. That should work too. Apart from masking tape, there is also the option of contact, as in contact wrap you'd put on books to protect them. Some people have had a lot of luck with that. Some people have had less luck. You, in general, you're going to have a better result with any given paint mask out of the box, whereas some contacts may be better than others. Some may leave a residue behind. So that's something you're going to have to do with a bit of uh, experimentation. However, the product and the process is going to be exactly the same. You need to seal it and you need to 
put down a lot of pressure to really get a good bond so that there's less separation whenever you're milling it. So perhaps this is not the most useful thing to the most amount of people, but hopefully you've learned something. Thanks for watching.